Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it comes from a message that was forwarded to me by one of our admins. And the message reads like this. Hello, Brother Nashi. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I regret ever looking for my biological father. If only I knew that he was going to take away my innocence, I would have stopped. I can't even stop crying as I am writing this message to you. I feel so much hatred deep down in my heart. I feel so much hatred towards the man who is my biological father. And I have no communication whatsoever with him, not his sisters, his brothers or anything to do with him. Yes, he brought me on this planet, but why? But why is the question that I keep on asking myself. He started when I was only 13, when I was just but a child. I grew up the hard way. Growing up without my parents was something that affected me and it affects me even up until today. It is more like a curse that was placed upon my life. It affects my relationships with everyone and even with the men that I date. This trauma, this trauma can't even leave my heart. My mom left me with her sister who had a very strong and ugly heart, an evil heart, I must say. I was young and she had her own husband and her own children. They treated me really bad. You know, when they say that you have been treated bad, they mean me. They will be speaking about me. She was so mean towards me. Rumor has it that she practiced witchcraft. And yes, I swear that my auntie, my mom's sister, she was a witch. And I am not in a position to deny it because she treated me like a slave. There were many nights whereby I would wake up, especially in the middle of the night. Then I will see a dark shadow, a dark shadow that will be walking around the room in which I'll be sleeping in. Then the next morning, then my auntie will start beating me up for no particular reason at all. With time, I then started understanding that my auntie will only beat me up whenever I'll see that shadow that will be walking around the house. I would wake up at 4 a.m. to make fire. This was like the rule that was only given to me. I would wake up at 4 a.m. to make fire whilst she was sleeping. And at that point, I was really young. I was only seven years old. Women out there, please pray unto God that God does not take you before your kids are fully grown. Because if God decides to take you when your child is somewhere around seven years old and your child does not have a strong support system in the family, your child is going to suffer. Being an orphan, it is not an easy thing. She protected her own children. She made me to become like a slave. I remember one time she made me to walk about 10 kilometers with her. While it, as for her kids, she would put them on the bus. She kept on complaining that there was no money. There was no money. I should be thankful unto God that at least she was providing a roof over my head. She was providing me with food to eat. This woman, she was quite evil. Sometimes when she will say, I want you to pray before we can start eating. And when I would say, God bless our food, she will say that you need to say, God bless this woman that is provided this food that I am about to eat. Brother Nashi, I cannot describe how much I longed to be with my parents and how much I felt so much lost. At that point, there was no phones. We could only write letters and they needed a stamp and that stamp was to be bought by money. I had no money as my mother had left me. I can safely say I could not do nothing except to endure the ill treatment and wait for a day when my mother would come. Well, as for my mother, she would come here and there, but whenever she came, I will not even tell her that her sister treated me in a very bad way. I had learned the hard way the first time around when my mom had came. I reported everything that my auntie and her children had done to me. But when my mom left, she called me and as she was pinching my ears, she said, so you think you are clever, you think you are clever. She pinched my ears until they were like hot. I felt like she wanted to pull my ears from my head, but all that I did was to cry. 
all that I could do was to cry. So whenever my mom would come, I had taught myself a lesson never to tell her how her own sister was treating me. I longed to be with my father because I thought if I would be with my own blood, if I would be with the man who had made it possible for me to be in this world, everything was going to be better, but it was just a fantasy. Well, it was one holiday when he came. My father, when he came, I was extremely happy. I said that this was the beginning of a better life. He was married to another woman and had a family of his own. I was super excited to finally leave my abusive aunt and to be with my dad. For the first time in my life, I could say, Dad, Dad. Something that was so precious to me because my auntie would never allow me to call her mom or her husband. She said that I am not your mom. Yes, I am your mom's sister, but don't call me mom. When I tried to call her husband dead, she slapped me once and she said, the next thing that you're going to do is that you're going to try and sleep with my husband. And I was young. I didn't even understand what it meant to sleep with a man. I am not going to lie. When I arrived at the place where my father was staying, my stepmom was just an average woman who didn't ill treat me at all. She was a village woman who would wake up very early in the morning, rush to the fields. She was always in a rush, that woman. She would come back in a rush to cook for us and she loved going to church, but she was a very reserved woman. That is when she went for this other woman's congress at church that my father came into the room at that time when she was not at home. She came into my room. I was sleeping. And at that time, I was really young. He then said, come, 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 my daughter. So I followed him. I was happy because I expected that he wanted to give me something. He then took me to his room and he started touching me. Well, I had never had any connection with him. So I thought that this is what dads do to their daughters so i thought he told me how much i reminded him of my mom i was confused especially when he started like kissing me that was when i drew the boundary and i knew that this was wrong there is no parent who can ever kiss their own child in this kind of a way i wanted to cry but he told me that everything was gonna be okay we were actually creating a bond that no one was going to destroy I was the old one out. My mother had married and I could not fit in. And this side, I was a god amongst the ship and I could not fit in again. Well, that was the beginning of my torture, my pain, my abuse for the entire four years of my life. And as I am writing this, I regret ever going to my father. I couldn't tell my stepmom what was happening. I was a stranger to her and the only person who was supposed to be protecting me was that same man who was busy doing all of this evil stuff to me. Brother Nashi, after four years, on this particular day, I just took my small satchel and I packed my clothes. We lived in a place that was about 20 kilometers away from the nearest town. I left their home at around four and then I packed my small belongings and I walked towards the nearest, the nearest town. I told myself that I would rather be a street kid than to stay with a man whom I had looked after for all my life. Whenever my auntie will beat me up, when I would close my eyes, I will start thinking about my father, how he was going to treat me the day that he was going to find me. He was like a role model. Yet when he finally came to pick me up, he saw a wife in me. I arrived in this small town with nowhere to go. I became a street dweller. I'll be back with how I lived in the streets and I got abused more, but still managed to be where I am today. Yeah, quite a sad story, quite a sad story.